Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Opening day in the D. The Tigers off to the hottest start in baseball, taking home yet another big win. Oh, yeah. And now the live pictures from Sky 4 over Comerica Park. The game may be over, but the party isn't dying down <laughs> anytime soon. All smiles at Comerica Park today as the Tigers got the win, bringing the team's uh, record to start this season to 6-1. and one. That's right. It's a start that a yeah. lot of people didn't see coming, and we've got all angles of the game covered. Rod Maloney has been hanging out with fans, and Hobie Arteague is in with the Tigers getting post-game reaction. Let's start things off with Bernie, though, live at Comerica. It got a little shaky there, but the Tigers are able to close it out on another big opening day, Bernie. Bernie, are you hearing me? Go, Bernie. Go, Bernie. <laughs> we have lost connection with Bernie, it would appear. Okay, tell you what, we will try and get back to Bernie. Let's see if Hobie can hear us. Hobie, are you there? He's, uh... Hey, what's going on, guys? Yes, you can. You can call this team, the Tigers, the close call cats to begin this season. Every single one of their wins this year has come in either extra innings or by one run. But here they are at 6-1, and one, getting that win today against the A's as they continue their hot start to the season. This is a great ball game, and we were tied 4-4 four to four going into the eighth inning. The Tigers took an early lead, but the A's came back to tie it. The Tigers did add some veterans to the roster this offseason, though, and that includes Gio Urshela, who delivered the go-ahead run to put this team up for good in the eighth. The bullpen closed it out once again. It's a team relying on each other as they continue to build chemistry that they hope can go for the rest of the spring and potentially beyond. A lot of season left. You know, it's still only been seven games, whatever. So, I mean, we still got under and... 55 more so uh, a lot of season left but uh, we're in a good spot scoring more runs than them being on the right side of it honestly you know whatever it takes uh, kind of sounds like a dumb answer but I mean it really doesn't matter what it takes we're going to try to figure it out towards the end of the game we're in the ball game then we have a chance and uh, yeah being able to win these games like we have is great and and uh, I think it just builds confidence too obviously we want to start April you know not so much surviving April but just trying to get off to a good start and it's much better than last season because in their first series last year, the Tigers were swept. In their first home series, they were also swept. But here they are with a chance tomorrow to win their first three series of the year. For more on this game, let's toss it over to Bernie, who's down on the field. Hey, Bernie. All right, Hobie, uh, we're ready to go now. They win it, as you said, 5 4, 44,711 saw it. And as everyone else said, 6 and 1 on the year for the Tigers. We've got highlights. We'll start in the Throwing Oakland 7th. Abraham Toro hits a Frank solo Tom home field. run here to left. Green that cut the lead, the Oak, uh, Tigers lead to 4 to 3. A fielder's choice later in the inning tied it at 4 4. But in the Tigers' 8th with a man on, Gio Urshela. With a double here to right, Spencer Torkelson scores. Tigers win at 5-4. After the game, manager A.J. Hinch said the new additions to Comerica Park are just fabulous for all involved. Oh, the fans were incredible. I mean, I think the environment was great. You know, all the new amenities for fans, for us, for, for the in and around the ballpark, there was a great vibe to the park. As far as my team, um, we have one of the younger teams in baseball. We, we show up with energy every day. How great is that, huh? So they show up with energy every day. Same two teams tomorrow. Tigers win it here 5 4. Much more coming up in sports. Uh, Devin, Kimberly, back mm -hmm. to you. You got it, Bernie. We'll get back to you shortly. But opening day, as you know, is uh, an unofficial, well, no, it's an official, yeah, I think, let's make it official. holiday that's in right. Detroit. Because yeah. win or lose is always going to be a fun party. Rod Maloney spent the day with fans. He's live downtown tonight. Rod, if opening day isn't enough, the wings, the, the win, came less than two hours away over at LCA. Yeah, they're going to be playing. We're seeing the traffic sort of crisscrossing here as tends to happen this time of year. But, you know, think about it. There's the fireworks, right? There's the Thanksgiving parade. You guys know the, the, the America's Thanksgiving Day parade, the Lions game. Those are touchstone moments in Detroit. But you know what? This day, that chilly day in April, is the one that a lot of Detroiters live for every year. And, boy, do they live it up. You can almost confuse baseball's opening day in Detroit with a football opener, considering they toss the pigskin. And Go Tigers! 
tailgate as if prohibition might return tomorrow. And yet Derek Eshelman of Hailgate says there's no finer way to start the Tiger season than with the chef prepared food and libations starting before noontime. There's no bigger party in Detroit than opening day. Never has been, regardless. Even the 100 lost teams in the early 2000s, opening day has always been a party. And the draw for Michigan natives like Derek Bob is something to behold. I'm here today from Louisville, Kentucky. I drove all the way in this morning. 4 a.m., got up, let's go. Why? I mean, is this is life, man. This is living, this is awesome. And it's a tradition with unique appeal. We have a lot of fun and we, we're, it's a guaranteed happy day. There's an electric and energy. It's, you know, it's the first. The first is always something special. It's like if you live in Detroit, this is what you do. This is Diane's 44th opener. Nine-year-old travel baseball outfielder Farouk Obig came in his Cabrera shirt and wore his mitt, hoping for a fly ball. And apparently, the younger you are, the more important the actual game becomes. I expect to see the Tigers win. Okay, we all hope for that. <laughs> I expect them. I expect it to be ten to zero because the Athletics aren't that good. Okay, so it wasn't ten nothing. Five to four. We'll take that. We can live with that. And you know, we don't know if Rook caught a foul ball, but you know what? No matter what, even if he didn't, the chances are he didn't. These are memories that he will carry with him for a lifetime. And that's really sort of the idea behind all of the opening day festivities. It's what you talk about with your kids and your grandkids. Coming up at six, we're going to talk about how chilly it was today and how people came, some prepared, some not. See you back at six. I love it that you're prepared, from Rod. America Park. You've got your swag on, your tiger <laughs> yep. swag on up underneath your local four vest, I see, nice and warm. Well, and, and, and having done this once or 25 <laughs> times, uh, I knew better. <laughs> and the idea that uh, prohibition might return tomorrow, that is as good as Rod That's Maloney gets. Line. That's great stuff, man. Love All right, we'll Rod. talk to you later, Rod. <laughs> All right, if you plan on heading to a game this year, we've got you covered. Yep, just head to the sports page at clickondetroit.com. Check out all the new things that are there this season at Comerica Park. More on that monster video board. Uh, and a lot more on all the new food options that are there, too. All right, let's turn our attention to the weather, which, of course, played a role today. <laughs> when it was, We had snow flurries coming down right around noon. Uh, yeah. You thought, whoa, it, there's Sky 4 over Comerica. It was chilly. Chilly for the fans of the game. But is it going to stay that way for the weekend? Let's get over to Kim Adams. Hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. Well, I counted four layers on Rod. And those are the ones that were visible. <laughs> that we can see. So who right. knows how layered up he really was, but definitely well prepared. And you needed to be today. We did have a few sprinkles and also a few snowflakes. Temps now are in the upper 40s, and it's dry, of course, now that the game is over. 46 in Howell, 45 in Pontiac, and 48 in Adrian. Exact track 4D radar. Aside from just a couple sprinkles here and there, we are done with the rain, at least for now. As we look at the clouds and radar, that area of low pressure uh, that brought us this kind of mix for the last several days is now moving out and that's going to set us up for a nice weekend. It's 46 in Mount Clemens, mid 40s in Pontiac. We are still a good 10 degrees below normal for this time of year, but tomorrow we go right back to just about where we should be, which is in the low to mid 50s. Start the day with clouds, end the day with sunshine and more sunshine for the second half of the weekend as well. Then we have to talk about some rain for Sunday night and we'll talk about whether or not that will affect the eclipse. Coming up. All right, Kim. All right, let's move our attention now to Ann Arbor, where a man has been formally charged for shooting a DoorDash driver who had stepped in to stop an assault. It all happened back on March 24th on North Main Street. Priya Man is live on this story. Priya, police got to the scene extremely fast. Yeah, that's right, Kim and Devin. Even before squad cars got there, a sergeant ran over where this victim was in bad shape. The U.S. Marshals eventually arrested this gunman. He was taken into custody yesterday. Both prosecutors and detectives arguing this defendant required a million dollar bond. I do think that Mr. Dye presents a significant um, risk to the community. 33-year-old Joshua Dye is accused of shooting a man who tried to stop him from assaulting a woman in Ann Arbor. It happened last month on a Sunday afternoon. Witnesses include a family with young children uh, walking back from the hands-on museum. The victim is a DoorDash driver and was driving on North Main Street near Ashley in downtown Ann Arbor when he saw the assault. The victim got out of his car and approached them, but police say when he locked eyes with the suspect, 
he tried getting away. He was essentially um, chased down and stalked and then shot as he was trying to remove himself uh, from this situation. He was shot before he could close the car door. The 23-year-old, who's a military veteran, was shot in the upper body. He managed to drive a few blocks away to this Firestone parking lot and call 911. It just so happens the police station is so close to that Firestone, a sergeant ran over and immediately helped the victim. Frankly, were it not for the fact that we were within such close proximity to a level one trauma center and that officers arrived so quickly, he may not be alive today. The consequences for this victim are severe, um, has been in and out of the hospital, two surgeries. These charges are um, obviously very significant. During testimony about Bond and Di being unhoused and lacking a fixed address, he had this outburst. I'm also that's because, that's because of what's all right. Mr. Mr. Di, you'll it's have an opportunity. You know, Joshua Dye is no stranger to law enforcement. He actually spent 10 years in prison for a horrific child abuse case. He was on probation when this happened. The woman who was being assaulted, police say she is expected to be okay. Dye will be back in court at the end of the month. Reporting live, I'm Priya Mann, Local yeah. 4. Okay, Priya, thank you.